Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today we're gonna to talk about how to build a budget home gym. This is by far the question I get more than any other is Coop, how can I build a gym that is good, useful, and also cheap? Those are like the things we're looking for, good, useful, and cheap, right? Well, today I'm gonna to tell you how I think you can do it very cheaply. Let's talk about it. So before I started Garage Gym Reviews, this was about seven, eight years ago, I tweeted something on my personal Twitter, which I don't use and really never use, but for whatever reason I decided out of a stroke of genius to tweet something. And it said, if I only had, I was in college at the time, if I only had a thousand bucks, I could build a killer home gym. And although that was almost a decade ago, today I think you can still build a killer home gym for less than a thousand bucks. I think in some cases you can do it for much less than that. It depends on what type of gym you wanna build, but I do think it's entirely possible to build an absolute kick-ass home gym for cheap. The first thing, the absolutely foundational thing to decide before you build your home gym is what type of training you want to do. What type of goals do you have and how do you wanna accomplish them? That's gonna dictate the equipment and the setup and the place you do it, everything like that in relation to your home gym. If you don't know like where you're gonna go, then you're not gonna know where to start with your equipment. So in fitness, there's all these different types of training, all these different niches within other niches. You've got powerlifting and even within powerlifting you have raw and you have strongman and you have Olympic weightlifting, general fitness, CrossFit, you name it. So you have to decide what type of training you wanna do because yeah, there's a catch-all type of equipment that can work for a lot of them, but I think first and foremost, you have to determine your goals. But for most people, I would say the goal is just general health and fitness. It's living longer, it's looking better naked, and you know, overall just being healthier. And so I think most training needs and most garage gyms, home gyms will situate around that focus. If you're competing in different things, obviously that's gonna change the equipment you're using. If you're competing in Olympic weightlifting, you gotta have bumper plates. If you're competing in powerlifting, you gotta use a 29 millimeter bar. You know, those sorts of things are factors you gotta consider. But for most people, I think the goal is to live longer and so you should situate your equipment around that. And that's kind of my focus for how to build a home gym today. Number two, and I think this is the way that most people should start, is starting with an MVP, okay? Whenever you're starting a business, most times you're starting with an MVP. And an MVP is not most valuable player, it's minimum viable product. What is the minimum amount of equipment you can have? What's the minimum amount of money you can spend to get the maximum benefit? To basically decide, is this something you really want to do long term? Because you can go out and make a beautiful man cave, but most of you should go out and make a pain cave. You should go out and make something that's minimal, doesn't cost a lot of money, so you can determine, is this something that I'm going to actually enjoy before going out and buying a, you know, a $10,000 squat rack bench, plates, bar, all that sorts of stuff. You need to decide what is the cheapest way to do that. And different people have different thoughts on this. For instance, Dave Tate, the owner of Elite FTS, and also like a, world level power lifter, an extreme example of somebody in a garage gym, he started by bu just buying equipment that he used in addition to what he used at the commercial gym. So instead of like buying like a bar and some of the basics, he started with just a GHD and some other things that he could do accessory work in addition to his regular commercial gym. And over time he just built it up so he had a commercial type gym in his garage and no longer needed the, the commercial gym. I think for most people though, it's starting with the essentials. The things that you really need to help you get bigger, stronger, faster, those sorts of things, or thinner. So for most people, that's the essentials. That's a squat rack of some sort that also has a pull-up bar. It's a barbell, because a barbell is really versatile. You can use it for a ton of different things. It's a bench, it's some plates, and I think it's like some adjustable dumbbells or some basic handheld weights of some sort. Those are like your basics, and you can do them for much cheaper than I think most people realize. So then more practically, I think the place to focus first is on used equipment. Pretty much all of this stuff either has a lifetime warranty 
or won't break within your lifetime. If you're buying gimmicky crap, yeah, it's gonna break. But if you're focusing, like I've told you, on the essentials, then it's things that's gonna be very high impact and gonna last a long time. And there's really no problem buying it used because most of this stuff would be fine in a commercial market where there's tons of people using it. But the reality is if somebody's selling it, it's because they probably didn't use it very much and they used it in a single person gym. So an 11 gauge steel upright squat rack is gonna last extremely long regardless of whether it has a warranty or not. So look to the used market because you may, depending on the product, get a little bit less than what it is retail, but you're gonna pay less in shipping and it's just gonna be cheaper overall. So I would start with the used market and then in addition to that, I would focus on first, not being afraid to build stuff. The garage gym way, the way that home gym started was doing it as cheaply as possible. And most of the time you couldn't get equipment. So people just built crap. Right? Like you pulled your bootstraps up, you got your miter saw, you got your drill, you went to Lowe's or Home Depot and got lumber, although it's extremely expensive today, you can still build stuff and it'll still be somewhat cheaper than what you can buy on the market, but you just build stuff. So if you want a sled, well maybe then instead of going out and buying one, you go get a tire. You put some weight on top, you attach a rope to it, and you drag it. If you want to use, say, a bench, get some wooden uprights, even squat rack. All the, there's a lot of this equipment that you can just build very cheaply so you can determine if it's something you actually want to buy. Because if you find yourself using it a lot, replace it and reward yourself for doing a good job in your training with a new piece of equipment you bought online. The next one would be watching for sales. Most gym equipment companies have one sale a year, historically and that's been Black Friday, okay? Obviously, COVID and kind of the pandemic and the increase in people wanting home gyms changed the dynamics there as far as like being low supply and a ton of demand where most of these companies didn't have sales these past few years or past year. However, going forward, I expect Black Friday and normal sales to continue to increase. Typically, it's been Black Friday. There have been some companies that have done them more often, and I suspect that more companies will do that, them more often than that as supply starts to meet demand. But I would look for Black Friday. I mean, some of this stuff, let's take Rogue Fitness for instance. They have one sale a year. You can buy like a boneyard bar, or every once in a while they have equipment that doesn't sell, and they just decide to like, hey, we'll sell it for cheaper. But really, majority of the time they have one sale matte black friday and they discount it it's not discounted a ton however when you start adding in your full cart with all these different items you start decreasing the shipping it can end up saving you a lot that's one of the problems with gym equipment is it's heavy so shipping it costs a lot more so buying it in bulk buying it a lot at a time is going to save you quite a bit of money and one of the best ways to do that is around sales times because a lot of this stuff doesn't go on sale because it's in such high demand. So looking for those times when there is a discount is gonna save you Benjamins. And that's something we all wanna save. So my last recommendation I think is one of the most pertinent and that is buy equipment that's versatile. Buy equipment that's gonna be used for a lot of stuff. So I talked about some of the essentials, but there's actually some items even beyond those that I think can really be versatile and also really cheap. An example is a sandbag. So you look at like a go rug sandbag or a brute force sandbag, even a rogue sandbag, something like that. A sandbag I think is a super underrated tool in a gym. You can use it for all sorts of dynamic movements. You can weigh it heavier. You can incrementally load it. Yeah, it's gonna take time. It's gonna you know, take more time than like putting plates on a bar, but it's also extremely cheap. You have a bag, you fill it with sand. You want it heavier, fill it with more sand. If you want it heavier than that, take out the sand, put in lead shot. You can build it extremely heavy and do it in a way that you know, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna increase your conditioning, and there's a ton you can do with it, and they're gonna last a long time. Another example is a barbell or adjustable dumbbells. They don't take up a ton of space. You don't need a ton of money to start with them. If you buy them right, they can last you literally generations so you can pass them down and they're not very expensive. But you can get pretty much all the training you want. CrossFit has shown us that you can not only do strength training with a barbell, you can also do conditioning. So if you wanna do conditioning with a barbell, do lighter weight, more reps. Conditioning equipment for a budget home gym isn't something I'd really recommend. I think for most people, starting with like basic strength training equipment and then using your body weight for the other types of conditioning exercises. So things like burpees, sprints, hill sprints, running, 
Those sorts of things are all things that all you have to do is go outside your door for most people. So buying equipment for that, like a treadmill and rower and all this sorts of stuff, get that stuff later. Focus on the stuff that you really can't do in your home gym with just your body weight. And most of that is gonna come in the form of a barbell, dumbbells, sandbag, that sort of thing. Okay, these are some tips on how to build a budget home gym. Some overarching tips that I've given over the years. I hope they're helpful to you. Let me know of some that you think you'd like to add to the list. We'll include them in a future video or maybe on the site. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.